Spectre Biosciences is working toward innovations to assist humankind with research in space. And with me is the CEO, Keishan Franks, to talk about it is exactly what it is you're doing. So tell me about Vector, what kind of research are you doing? Well, at Vector Space Biosciences, first I'd like just to summarize what we talked about during our last interview, which was based on the drug Keytruda. And most people have seen Keytruda commercials, most people know the drug. It's, work, it's built by Bristol-Myers Squibb. Uh, Merck and Bristol-Myers Squibb have operations in space where they launch drug compounds into space so that they can understand how the proteins crystallize to make them more effective for people based on precision medicine on the ground. Okay, so uh, what we work on today is drug repurposing. So drug repurposing, a, a very good example of that would be the drug Wegovi. Mm -hmm. So most people have also heard of Wegovi. Certainly uh, a lot lately. Yeah. That's yeah. right. <laughs> so Wegovi uh, was a drug for you know weight loss and obesity and things like that but they found that it would reduce heart attacks and strokes by about 20 percent and <clears throat> that's an, a, probably one of the best and most recent examples of drug repurposing there are about 7400 fda approved drugs the diff <laughs> the reason you want to focus on drug repurposing is that <laughs> You can get it fast track in three months instead yeah. of waiting 10 years right, for an right. FDA approved drug. They already know it's safe. Yeah, they know it's safe. They're just right. trying, I guess, to test yeah. the effectiveness right. of it at that point. And then at the same time, you know, <laughs> you, you have companies that can tack on an additional 14.5 billion, like mm -hmm. Novo Nordisk, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. to their valuation. Yeah. So protecting humans and, you know, increasing your valuation at the same what time. What is it about, about space that. Um, helps them test the effectiveness of these drugs. So the microgravity in space okay. enables a drug compound or protein to crystallize mm. in a much more uniform fashion so that it can be more effective once that uniform fashion can be brought back yeah. down to the ground. So let's talk about 2024. What kind of projects, things do you have in the pipeline? Well, we've, we have two main things in the pipeline. Number one, getting on the launch calendar and that takes passing FCC approval and things like that. And then number two. You mean like a rocket launch calendar? Yes. Okay. That kind of, yeah, uh -huh. exactly. And then, of course, launching. Yeah. And then being sponsored by some of our partners. Yeah. Okay. And then um, what are your other goals besides that for 2024? Do you have any? I mean, that sounds like a big well, one. What we, does it take to get that done? Uh, it, takes, it takes partners like U.S. Space Command. Mm -hmm. It takes partners like Oracle. It takes partners like NVIDIA, mm. and that also includes, of course, most importantly, our scientific advisory board, because we've specialized in this since 2002, focusing on space biosciences now and the problems in space. So you mentioned NVIDIA. Uh, is there an AI component to what you're doing? Well, absolutely. You actually can't do good biology without adding computation. Mm. And today, when you look at AI, language modeling is the tip of the spear in AI. Most people have heard of ChatGPT. Yeah. Most people have heard of OpenAI now. Mm -hmm. Most people have heard of what Microsoft is doing in OpenAI. We have specialized in computational biology, which is the combination of language modeling and biology, and of course, space biosciences. Yeah. So wh how, what does AI do specifically to help with the research that you're doing? Well, when you look at language modeling, you're finding patterns in data. Mm -hmm. And language modeling, we always like to mention to the public that language modeling doesn't mean just human language. Mm -hmm. Everything is a language. Mm -hmm. An RNA sequence of protein or a DNA sequence, that's a language. So when you chop it up or you chop up an image or you chop up text, you can use language modeling to determine patterns in that text. And then of course create data sets from there that you have data and then language modeling and then data sets and then you can extract the vectors from the data sets. And I know I'm using some lingo you know, yeah. that most people might not know. <laughs> but you, know, you extract certain components from the data sets. And then you can visualize hidden relationships between proteins, drug compounds, genes, diseases. Yeah. So the AI will allow you to maybe see things that you couldn't have seen any other way. Absolutely. Basically, relationships, as you mentioned. So how can investors get involved? Well, we have a trading vehicle. Uh, that's S-Bio and that represents the equity. It's a security token. It represents the equity of our company. And then of course we have VXV, which controls data set security and data set provenance. Hmm. Because the data set, data sets power all of AI. That's one of the most important things to know. So if 
if it's a new attack surface, you have to protect your data set. So we use a, a utility token, VXV, to protect the, <laughs> basically the pro what's called provenance and security of the data set. And S-Bio at the same time supports the equity. So we raise a little bit of capital based on mm -hmm. S-Bio, which is traded on LBank.com okay. right now. So could they go to your website and learn more about these different investment vehicles? Absolutely. It's vectorspacebio.science. Okay. Cajun, thank you so much. Sure thing. Okay.